Hey everybody, I'm James Melzer with MovieWeb, and today I'm sitting down with director Kia Roach-Turner to discuss his new film, Sting, which hits theaters on April 12th from WellGo USA Entertainment. Kia, how you doing today? It's good to talk to you. Um, I'm good. Any day I get to talk about giant spiders is a good day, James. Fantastic. Uh, congratulations on this movie. I've been a fan of creature features going all the way back to the 80s. I mean, Razorback, Aliens, The Thing, Critters, all those movies. And and to me, Sting is right up there with them. It was so good. Congratulations, man. You made a fantastic film. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I, I love creature features too, you know, and you, you got like the big ones, like you like you mentioned Alien, Aliens, you know, Jaws, like all that kind of stuff. Like The Thing, I guess, is a creature feature, um, even though it's an alien creature feature. But like you just, you even the bad ones are good. You know what I mean? Like it's such exactly. a good genre. I'm, I'm so glad that I finally got to make like a proper creature feature, you know? <laughs> all right. I want to get to the film itself in just a second, but I want to touch on your, your, your fear of spiders that led to this movie, because as I understand it, all your arachnophobia it sort of stems from being bitten by a spider when you were a toddler uh do you do you remember this experience <laughs> vividly or is it something that was sort of intensified by your by your mom's recollections over the years <laughs> I, I got i got bitten by a spider when i was a kid and i didn't get any powers you know like i my power is to be scared of spiders you know that is my power um so unlike spider-man you know all i can do is make a movie about it um, I don't remember it because I think I was like two, but apparently I was sitting in a sand pit and I got bitten by like a giant Australian spider. And if you know anything about Australian spiders, like they get really big. Like we, we got these things called huntsmen over here that can get as big as dinner plates. And um, they're terrifying. And I, you know, I live in the mountains, like about an hour out of Sydney. And so there's a lot of them up here um, and they like to live in the house with you for some reason they don't pay rent they do eat the flies so they are helpful but yeah they 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 tend to hide in places where you open a door or like pull curtains back and they're just there and then they move really quickly and you scream like a baby and you cry um and so yeah i mean that i've had to deal with that for years and um you know when it came time to trying to think of the the scariest thing that i could possibly think of as an iraq uh, an iraq uh, it's hard to pronounce this word arachnophobic as an arachnophobic, I couldn't think of anything scarier than a panther-sized spider that's going to drag you into air conditioning ducts and, you know, slowly devour you in a basement. And so, yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a film about it. Absolutely. How did you, uh, I guess, how did you reconcile your fear of spiders uh, with actually, you know, having a giant spider on set? Did you have to sort of constantly in your head, sort of like that old Last House on the Left poster, just to remind yourself, it's only a movie, it's only a movie? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was really hard. Like, I was hoping that I'd have some kind of, like, it would be curative or something, but it actually kind of made it worse. Like, all the research I did just made me more scared of spiders and, like, I still hate them. It hasn't helped. And walking on set, it it it, it bothered me. <laughs> like, you know, and I've yeah. worked with zombies. I've worked with demons. I've worked with all, none of that bothered me. This bothered me. Like, I'd work, walk on set and there's just this giant spider over there. And the puppeteers didn't help. Like I'd go up to check the goop and they'd move the thing. And like, I would scream. I'd be like, ah! and like every time they got me, I'd be like, you have to stop guys. You have to stop, like turn it off. Like, you know, and I'd always go, oh, it, it's not on, is it? It's, it's not going to move. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. The battery, it's not even plugged in. And then I'd go up close to check it and they'd, they'd move the legs and rear it up at me. And every time I'd, I'd freak out. So um, yeah, they didn't really help. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right. Uh, the story of Sting. Um, uh, I'm a stepfather. I know you're a stepfather. Ryan Core was mm. raised by two step parents. So that emotional core, you know, it really resonated with me. And it it's what for me elevated Sting just above, you know, your everyday monster movie. Um yeah. was this was this a story that had been brewing for a while in you that you decided to sort of wrap a creature feature around? I mean, how important was that familial aspect for you? Well, not so much brewing as I lived it. You know, this is the right. first time I just took my family and just wrote it into a script. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, all the drama is made up. You know, me and my stepdaughter get on actually really well. There's not much drama, so you have to kind of make that up. But all of the feelings are there. And so I kind of just wrote, I, I just took my family as a template and wrote around it. You know, I was writing during COVID, so that was a dark time. Like, it was right after the fires in Australia, so... Like the country was in a mess. Like it was, you know, the, the economy was like problematic. Um, so I just took all that stuff and um, put it into a script. You know, we just had a baby and there was stresses around that. And, um, you know, I just put 
the giant spider as a metaphor for familial strife, depression, anything black in your life was 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 kind of defined by the metaphor of this black thing that comes down from space and lands in the middle of your family. And I was like, that was the idea for it, you know. But the the relationship with my stepdaughter was, you know, she's a brilliant artist and she's a brilliant writer, weirdly. So even though she's a kid, I'll take her aside and go, hey, I'm working on this script. Can you help me with this? She's like, that's a dumb idea. That's a good section. Why don't you try this? And she talks to me like, you know, it's, it's so funny. She's like a she's like a 35-year-old screenwriter from LA. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's so funny. And so I just put that in the movie, you know. And I remember talking to the producers early on and just going, this stepfather thing, is it relatable? Maybe, maybe I should change it. And they're just like, no it's good it's 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 original like we haven't really seen it and to talk to a step parent like you i've talked to a couple of step parents now just going hey thanks for putting this in a movie because yeah. you never see it and it's like yeah man like i love my stepdaughter so much and like i've been through so much with her and it, it's often not represented or if it is it's usually a negative thing like the evil step mum or whatever or stepdad or mm -hmm. and you know i wanted to show a positive thing where like the journey is for her to call him dad at the end and it's like it's the best thing you know like when a stepkid calls you dad it makes you feel really good because it's you know it like it's a bond that's earned not a bond that comes immediately and uh, you know that's a that's a yeah it's a good thing i'm glad yeah, it's absolutely in. yeah yeah it's fantastic i loved watching sort of the uh the the pressure that Ethan, that Ryan Kaur was under throughout the course of the film and watching his sort of descent as he finally loses it at the end. Um, but yeah, that that journey, I mean, I remember what it was like to be first called dad by my uh, by my stepchild, you know? So it's just, yeah, it was fantastic. Definitely relatable. I'm glad you did it. <laughs> it's a good feeling, man. Um, yeah, because it's it's you as a human being. That, because you, you can, any kid who you have biologically loves you and calls you dad you know what I mean but it's like mm -hmm. this person sees me as a human being you know what I mean and like that's that's cool yeah <laughs> all right so the uh the setting of the apartment building uh in Wormwood it's very claustrophobic and I really like that um but it's claustrophobic compared to you know the Wormwood films um was this sort of was this a conscious decision for you like after Wormwood Apocalypse did you consciously want to do something on a smaller scale well it's weird it's funny that it's like you say smaller scale um, because it was so much bigger to build because we had to build multiple apartments. We had to build all of these corridors. We had to build like, you know, uh, uh, the exterior of the thing and have all this kind of fake snow going everywhere and create a, uh, a storm. We had to build a, a basement. We had to build a, um, uh, a garbage compactor that an entire family could fit in. We had to build like a huge labyrinth of... Um, um uh air conditioning ducts that people are crawling through like uh, bedrooms um and it was just like mammoth like it i thought it was smaller gonna be, like, it seems smaller on screen as i was <laughs> writing it yeah i'm like oh this is so small it's so great so contained and then we start actually mapping it out and my production design is like dude we have to build all this and i'm just like oh my god um and actually, it's the biggest thing we've ever had to build you know um when would apocalypse w w w was much easier to make you know we, we shot that out on you know this beautiful property in Dural um, all on one property and you know like they had this giant refrigerator unit um, and we just built our sets in there and um, you know and then um, I think you know we just we, we, we used found object art like you know we, we just found stuff on the property and said well let's build around that and turn that into the entrance to the whatever you know so with this one we couldn't do any of that at all it was all in studio and it all had to be built from scratch so it was actually really difficult but yeah my inspiration for that was obviously you know every haunted house movie ever made but but more uh, in particular the the nostromo from alien i wanted to try and have a nostromo in a new york apartment building and seal them in via a storm rather than an airlock you know yeah, yeah, you did a great job. I mean, the 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 alien DNA in this is very present, and I really appreciated that, especially toward the end when uh, when Elila sort of makes that shift into the Ellen Ripley type badass to to fight the spider and save her and save her parents. I really enjoyed that. So, did a good job. Uh, oh, yeah, I've been trying to copy Alien my entire career. It's <laughs> probably my favorite directed horror film of all time. It's yeah, it's the Rosetta Stone for for horror filmmakers.
Absolutely. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> and uh, Weta did a good job with with Sting. The, I, I was speaking to Richard Taylor yesterday, and uh, he had nothing but good things to say about you, by the way. So good. <laughs> um, I love but, Richard so much. You know, it's like getting to work with Superman. It's just like, yeah, I can't believe yeah. you exist. Like, it's That's just, what I was going to yeah. ask. I mean, it's got to be like a, a kid on Christmas to collaborate with Weta. What was that like for you, man? Uh, I mean, it's the best. Like, not only do you get to meet a hero and work with a hero, but like, we had a repartee. I immediately liked him. And I think he immediately liked me. You know, I was like, at first I was like, oh, this guy's just really polite. I guess he's being polite. But eventually I'm like, oh, I think he's enjoying himself. Um, Because he'd been wanting to make a giant spider movie for ages. And basically, you know, like I've I've watched eight hours of like behind the scenes Lord of the Rings stuff. So I I guess I kind of know how he works, you know. And uh, I'd watched him and, you know, Peter Jackson work together for so long. And I'm just like a little mini me, Peter Jackson, I guess, you know, um, (laughs) with, you know, 8% of the budget. Um, And um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. We had a shorthand, like I would say a thing and he'd just go, yep. And he got it immediately and just gave me exactly what I wanted without even having to talk about it, you know, and um, it was a beautiful experience. And we knew as soon as Weta came on board that we just didn't have to worry about the spider and we didn't, you know, I mean, those guys are the best and there's a reason why they're the best. Yeah. He said, uh, he said that his puppeteers came back to him and said that you, you were the type of director that had pinpointed focus. You knew exactly how sting wanted to move. You knew where you, you, the, the legs had to go and everything like that. But I have to ask, I mean, were there any Bruce, the shark moments on set where sting just wouldn't do what you wanted her to do? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like it's hard with a puppet, because with a person, like, and I've done a lot of demon zombie movies where it's just a person in a suit, that's mm-hmm. easy. Because, you know, if you want somebody to make a move specifically, um, you can direct them, like, really specifically. But a puppet, you know, like a human being can make a hundred different moves in a second. A puppet can make six. So it's mm-hmm. like if you anything you plan for works really well, anything right. you try to improvise forget about it and so you you have to yeah you have to plan your stuff really specifically and test it and um yeah it's it's very difficult working with a puppet and making it look good um and even though I'd seen all the movies and I'd seen all the behind the scenes like this um and yeah I really struggled with it um but you're supposed to I mean that stuff's not supposed to be easy. You know, you, you you look at the behind the scenes of something like The Thing and, you know, it's such a wonderful film. But, like, mate, you, you see how many takes they had to do. They spend a whole day on a single yeah. shot and we couldn't do that. I had 45 minutes. So, you know, because film ambitions are getting bigger but the budgets are getting smaller, it's getting mm-hmm. harder for, you know, directors like me to pull this stuff off. Um, um, but you got to, you know, nobody cares what the budget is. Nobody gives a crap about your schedule. Is it good? Is it scary? Is it entertaining? <laughs> That's all people want to know. And so you just got to give them that, you know, however you can do it. And I, and I, we did, I'm just lucky that we had such good puppeteers and I had Richard and such a great puppet, you know? So yeah, if, if it hadn't been so good, I think I would have been in, in, in a lot of trouble, you know? <laughs> did a fantastic job. I know my time is coming to a close soon. Uh, just one last question. Uh, speaking to Ryan and Lila, they were actually, they were absolutely, ecstatic that they didn't have to leave Australia to film this movie. So for you, did it feel good not have to not to have to leave Australia to film this? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like we've got families and, you know, we right. like to live here and, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I haven't had to travel much, luckily, right. you know, but that's kind of another template that Peter Jackson's done. You know, he's just like, I'm going to make Middle Earth. I'm going to make a crazy, um, you know, island where King Kong lives. You know, I'm going to like I'm going to make the entire of New York, you know, for the opening sequence of King Kong, but I'm just going to build it in my backyard in Wellington. That guy never goes anywhere. And I'm just, it's so brilliant. Um, And so we've been able to do the same thing with my films and um, yeah, just to be able to just drive over there Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly you're in New York. It's great. You know, and it's the way I really like to make films, you know, Um, and yeah, it's good to be able to make films in your hometown. You know, it's not that hard to, you know, build a bit of New York and then do the accent. And um, yeah, it means it means you can just stay home with your family. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, man. Kia, I really appreciate your time. Sting hits theaters again, April 12th from Logo USA Entertainment. Uh, again, congratulations with the movie. I hope it's a big hit. I think everyone 
needs to see this it's fantastic if you love monster movies, i hope it's it I, I i i hope it's a big hit just because i want to do sting too so yeah. please buy lots oh of my tickets God. And it's, I'll get it's to do wide open for that <laughs> <laughs> oh i would love that james thank you so much i've had such a good time today